Hey everyone, here we are at Hutch Metro Dental at the Hutchinson Metro Center, and we're here today to learn about all things dentistry. And to join us today we have Julia, who is one of the, the owners of this practice, who I think came here almost 15 years ago. That's right, that's right. We've uh, opened up uh, in 2005. I remember uh, I walked in into this building and uh, there was nothing but concrete right. and uh, yes and I was actually very cautious because I was uh, wearing shoes on the heels uh, but I, I was very excited and uh, we were so happy ever since and we feel very nice and very welcomed here uh, at this building. We feel like a part of the family. Why, why did you choose this location because when you came to this building there was nothing here. We were in this area of the Bronx there were probably other dentists in the area, but for some reason you had a vision to be here at the Hutchinson Metro Center. Why did you choose this location? Well, at first uh, the location uh, seemed to me uh, very um, uh, new and approachable and we wanted to be a part of the Bronx community to deliver the services to the um, people who live in the Bronx. This is not just a regular dental office, this is an experience that the patients they get when they come in here. Is that important to you? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, this is actually why uh, me and Dr. Kushensky decided to build this practice mm. because, uh, you know, when you think about teeth, when you think about dentistry, uh, many of us have 32 teeth. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Uh, the dental issues more or less the same. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, they vary from uh, person to person. But when it comes to the uh, person, the approach, it should be personal. For us, mm -hmm. the dentistry, and I believe the medicine should be mm -hmm. at anywhere as a, as, a, as a personal thing. Because, you know, a patient, every patient has different level of anxiety. You know, people don't like dentists. People mm -hmm. don't like doctors. So we, decide, we decided to take a different approach. Uh, mm -hmm. We uh, manage our patients with the different technology that we have available in the office. Mm -hmm. uh, we do use uh, nitrous oxide for... Um, for mainly for our um, uh, small uh, patients, for our pedo patients, because it's important to have that positive attitude toward dentistry mm -hmm. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like that fear that we have towards the dentistry, it's not, it doesn't, it didn't just, you know, happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we developed that whoever, you know, has the fear to, of the dentist at the very early age. So we tried to calm them down, we um, offered the nitrous oxide, for our adult patients, let's say if we extract the wisdom teeth, we offer them the sedation. Mm -hmm. So it's a, uh, it's a almost a partial um, hospital grade sedation that mm -hmm. our one of our oral surgeons um, uses. Can you talk about um, the uh, patient care aspect too? That you have people here that um, are caregivers, they're, they're setting up a program because people don't know about how to take care of their teeth, what kind of program they need, what, how do I do with my insurance? I'm confused. What, what do you offer here to help your patients? Uh, well, uh, every patient comes and they be seen by um, a healthcare provider. Mm -hmm. uh, a certain diagnosis and a treatment plan is being proposed to the, dent, uh, to the, to the patient. After that, the patients are being seen by the uh, treatment coordinators. Mm -hmm. And at the treatment coordinator center, uh, they've been explained what kind of treatment mm -hmm. will uh, this patient needs to have done. Uh, kind of the simple language, because mm -hmm. you know, based on the doctor's notes, obviously in the diagnosis, uh, we explain them step by step, how many steps that will take, how your insurance will work, do you do or you don't need the prioritization from the insurance company, is there any out of pocket expense, if yes, what kind of payment options do we offer, and we do offer mm. many of them. What would you say to the people in the Bronx about the importance of taking care of their teeth and, and coming to a practice like this? What, what's the message? What, what, what do you want them to know? I would like them to come to see a dentist uh, on a regular basis, whether mm -hmm. it's our practice or it's any other dentist. It's important to keep the good oral hygiene, um, uh, take care of the uh, diet mm -hmm. and, you know, eliminate the bad habits mm -hmm. if there is any. <laughs> right. Well, Julie, you know, we want to thank you for all you've done since you've opened this practice. I, I don't think there's a person that I don't talk to, you know, in a group that hasn't been to your, your dentist thank you. uh, practice here because of all the wonderful things you do. So we, we, we love having you here in the Bronx. Thank you so much for being here and continue the great work. Thank you. We're going to thank try you. our best. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. I'm a periodontist here at Hutchinson Metro Dental. I've been with the practice for about five years now. Um, what we do here as a team is we 
provide comprehensive care to patients, uh, whatever they may, their needs may be. Uh, I personally treat periodontal disease, gum disease, which is probably the most pe uh, prevalent condition that affects adults. I like to focus on that for a second. I noticed mm -hmm. that I mean, you hear that oral hygiene is probably one of the most important things for preventive care. Right. Is that true? Uh, yes. Okay. It is true. Hygiene. Basically, if they're not taking care of their teeth, they're coming to you and then they have these, these conditions that right. have to be treated. Right. And hygiene is, is, is most important. Anything that we can do uh, works only as, as good as you can keep it. Right. <laughs> so it's, it, it's paramount. Whatever treatment the patients need, the hygiene is the most important thing and we're here to um, educate patients, to reinforce the hygiene practices, correct whatever um, deficiencies that there may be and make sure that pa patients are comfortable and healthy. And what time of, type of procedures do you have to perform on patients? Um, a variety of procedures. Sometimes it's preventive care, sometimes it's uh, surgical treatment, regenerative treatment, corrective treatment for uh, either deficiencies in alveolar bone, that basically retentive bone that holds the teeth in place, or soft tissue. We also replace missing teeth with implants, bridges, and provide uh, rehabilitation to patients who are dentalists or don't have teeth. Yeah, you read a lot about uh, implants today. It seems like that's the way to go. B back in the day, everybody, I guess, wore dentures or removable teeth. Now it seems that the implants are, are the way to go. Im implants, implants are great. Implants are great, but there's nothing better than what the nature provides. Mm. So there's, it, it always, it, it's always a good idea to to keep teeth in if they could be saved. Implants do work great if that's not an option. Mm -hmm. But uh, and then we try and find a balance here. Right. With, uh, you always want to try and do something that's, that's also, it also has a good long-term prognosis. If you're saving a tooth that's not, uh, it, some, in this day and age, sometimes being heroic is, is not worth it. Mm -hmm. In terms of, um, the discomfort that the patient may be going through to save a tooth that doesn't have a poor prognosis, an implant may be uh, a better way to go for it. You know, most, a lot of patients are, you know, always concerned about the pain and discomfort and there's always a fear, uh, it seems, like coming to the dentist. But I know that this is, I always call this like a dental spa, really. It's like people come in here, they have a whole experience seeing their dentist and how do you make them feel comfortable and what types of treatments do you offer to sedate pain and things like that? What's what's happening in today's technology too? Um, oh, first of all, you try and find a personal approach to a patient first to make sure that they're comfortable. Um, if they do have some kind of dental phobias and uh, anxiety, we provide um, oral sedation, uh, nitrous oxide sedation, or intravenous sedation here as well. So we do sedate patients here for um, <clears throat> certain procedures, mostly surgical procedures, but it is it's definitely available here. Uh, we do have uh, a surgeon who does that here. When a person has a problem with their teeth, does that affect other uh, sense of well-being? Does it affect other parts of the body? I mean, I've heard that you know if something's happening with your teeth and you may and you're not really taking care of it, it could cause other issues. Is that right. true? Well, the, the dental apparatus, the dental system, the oral system is very finely tuned. There's, mm. imagine having um, a, a little rock in your shoe. You can walk around and mm -hmm. go about your normal daily activity. Imagine having a little pit stuck between your teeth. It drives mm. you nuts. Imagine having toothache. Mm. It affects your everyday uh, activities, mm -hmm. living and being. So it's, it's, it definitely affects your well-being and overall mindset. There are other um, systemic conditions that are affected by certain oral problems and oral health type. Um, periodontal disease is associated with uh, certain systemic conditions and there's a, a, a two-fold relationship, two-way relationship with those conditions. So treating Oral uh, disease definitely improves the overall health of the patient as well. Mm, that's great. Well, doctor, I want to really thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know you have a lot of procedures to do today. Thank you. And the fact that you've come here to share this knowledge with us and the people in the Bronx is really appreciated. Thank, thank you. you so much, doc. Thank you. Okay, thank you.